Tell us about this then, what's this? Uh, well, that's my uh, studio where we basically do everything. And most importantly, that's the lovely people that I work with that you can see on the image, uh, the po nice Polaroids that are on the left that was taken last week. And where is the studio? Uh, the studio is in uh, Hackney Central, so east of Mare Street. How do you see the area changing? I mean, there was a lot of talk before the Olympics about whether it was a positive force for regeneration or a, a negative force, banks moving in and rich people moving in. H how do you see it? How um, is it? creative industry faring? I think in terms of uh, security, uh, especially being Canadian, I'm, I've never been really exposed to, you know, uh, such clashes in culture as we have in London and, you know, the type of security problems that you have or, you know, feeling scared when you're walking in the street, etc. Uh, so from that thing, that you know, that thing happening, changing, is changing the streets of London, that is a positive thing. Um, we actually count how fast Hackney Central changes by counting the amount of, we call them blackboard cafes that sell flat whites. <laughs> Coffees, like, you know, there's a new one opening every week. So I guess to a certain extent, that's good. But what it's also creating is uh, creating um, a, a giant demand and which uh, escalates in price where and certain people, well, uh, the inhabitants of Hackney can't necessarily live there anymore and they necessarily need to be pushed out of Hackney into the next neighbor, neighbor uh, neighborhood and the same will happen within five years. So it's just not extremely fair, uh, but it's inevitable with such a megapole as London. Tell us about this. In no way do I compare my work or my business or uh, or who I am uh, to uh, Charles and Reims. I'm just um, idolizing and extremely obsessed, as um, as cliche as it might sound, because they're the you know probably the best known designers in the world. But uh, in terms of um, a studio and what they represent and what I aspire to uh, you know work, uh, they are the best possible example because they worked on a on a multitude of platforms. You know they are best known for their furniture uh, work, but they were cinematographers, choreographers, uh, visual artists, uh, printmakers, architects. They worked on, on such a, a giant body of work that's so impossible to explain, like the, the, the facets and multitudes of work that they did, that um, that's kind of what I would like to base my studio on. So what is... What is happening oh, in this Okay, slide? so this is a project we did for Gvadrat. Uh, Gvadrat is a, um, a lovely um, a fabric company, and they wanted to sort of um, uh, celebrate their uh, Hallingdal fabric at the uh, last, last year's Salone. And it just shows basically our, our, our sort of a part of our design process. We make a lot of things in the studio. We're not very sort of style. Uh, we don't do style exercises. That's not really uh, what we do. Form and style is extremely important, but it usually comes at a very long, stretched out, process-based lead design and then we think about the shape. So uh, I guess um, that, that just kind of explains uh, the, uh, the multitude of tests that we've made in order to create these freestanding stools. They were stools that didn't actually use a, uh, you know, a metal frame or a timber frame and all that they were is these uh, you know, rolled up quadrat fabric and then we just had a layer of um, glue in between them so that once the product cure, it would be extremely lightweight and uh, the whole thing would only be using fabric and nothing else. Most people thought they were just upholstered and <laughs> fabric <laughs> at the end, so uh, I guess the effect wasn't there. But um, we, we started with an idea and then we tr tried a multitude of tests and then which eventually led to a product being born. And that's how we usually approach products. Uh, we try a concept and a process and we'll develop it and push it. And then what we'll try to push, we'll, we'll, we'll discover a new sort of tangent, tangent idea, explore that, and eventually it can become a suitable product. Now this... Uh, that's just another example of uh, this uh, going on right now at Design Junction. I don't know if you've been. Uh, this is the Artec stand. Um, Artec approached us to work with us recently. And um, we, uh, they asked us to do something with them and to create a cafe with Fernandez and Wells who make really good coffee and uh, are amazing food as well. And we created sort of this temporary space at Design Junction for them. So it's just sort of the first slide was showing part of our, you know, uh, most of our, our interest is furniture, but we're also interested in spaces and how, you know, products themselves inhabit a space. And that just shows uh, a lot of our tech products, which we are all obsessed with at the studio. We love the brand and um, we've developed uh, sort of a solution for their, um, their needs. And that was extremely fun and interesting. Okay, finally. Oh, finally, uh, this is a piece called Blur, and um, the crystal manufacturer Zorowski uh, supplied us with quite a lot of products, and we were just 
s interested in the, in the qualities of the crystal, its reflectiveness and its um, translucency. And we decided to, um, well, after doing quite a lot of sort of process-based experimentation, AKA putting you know uh, <laughs> a crystal on a drill and bashing it against sandpaper to see what would happen. We just sort of discovered that would be fun to spin it, and then took it from there and made uh, these light paintings out of it. So these are hung light paintings that you can see at the design museum right now, and they're just very simple. They're four strings uh, of um, crystals that are going at a very fast RPM and uh, appropriately lit. So they're actually rotating, are they? Yeah, it rotates. Uh, I think it rotates at four million RPM per month. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, that sounds the, like a tunnel boring bit. Pardon? That's how they made the channel tunnel, isn't it? They they put one of those. Oh yeah, diamond the, face the sort of grinder, the diamond grinders. Yeah, actually, that that could be a nice, um, yeah, interpretation of it. <laughs> <laughs> Might take the museum down. Anyway, Philip, it's been great speaking to you. Thank thanks you. so much. Thanks and, for having um, me. Thanks for coming over. All right, cheers.